All right. Hello, everyone. A blessed Saturday morning to all the pet parents out there. And I hope we are all doing good and safe during this time of pandemic. Welcome to another exciting episode of Maxim Talks, where in we're going to talk about relevant matters about your dogs, because your dogs matter. I'm Dr. Renil Montero, your host for this morning. So for today, medyo aalis muna tayo sa world of infectious and parasitic diseases, right? So since we now know how to handle those diseases that we have discussed from our previous episodes, and since those diseases are mostly occurring during a puppyhood stage, I think we can now move on and discuss other considerations that we need to take note of on bringing home a puppy. So you want to bring home a puppy, right? But before anything else, to help us understand the things that we need to consider and the things that we need to know first before owning a cute puppy, and also to help us prepare in transitioning as a pet parent, we have invited someone who has a great experience and we can consider as one of the best dog experts in our country. He has been a professional dog trainer for more than a decade now. Imagine those years of being a dog trainer. I bet he can speak with the dogs, right? <laughs> Kidding. So the only he is the only professional force-free trainer in the Philippines. So let's ask him later what's about uh, being a force-free trainer, okay? So he is also a member of various uh, organizations like the Association of the Professional Dog Trainers or the APDP, the Pet Professionals Guild or the PPG, and Association of Force-Free Pet Professionals. All right, let's all welcome Dog Coach Francis. What's up, Coach? It's really good to finally get a chance to chat with you, Coach. Hello, good morning, Philippines. Good morning, pet parents, and good morning to you too. Doc Ron, thank you for having me. Yes. By the way, Coach, I've been itching to ask this, no, kanina pa. And for the benefit of our viewers, how does a force free dog trainer differ from the other dog trainers? Wonderful question. Actually, when you say force free training, this is a matter of a philosophy of training dogs wherein we try to teach dogs using um, the least aversives as much as possible in teaching a puppy or an adult dog. So we prefer not to use aversives like chokers, shock collars, or anything that would be too punitive in teaching a dog. So we prefer to use scientific reward-based dog training. So uh, we use different kinds of, kinds of rewards, whether that's food, um, that's uh, play, or even just your dog wanting to be with you, which will serve as a reward. So that's how it works. And it's actually easier if you just know what you're doing. It can actually be even less stressful for pet parents and even, and actually, especially for the dogs. So that's what yeah. horse free training is. Thanks, Coach, for those, I know, for those words and for giving us a meaning of uh, what a horse free training means, right? So... All right, uh, I just want to remind everyone, to all our viewers, if you have questions, just please write in the comment section and we will answer them all uh, today. If hindi man namin mabasa yung questions nyo, I will get back to you later and I will answer every question that you will put on our comment section. All right, so uh, my God, I can't wait to start this up. So, Coach, what are the things that we can expect for today's lesson? Well, the, the topic for today is about bringing home a puppy. And a lot of people are probably asking, okay, so we want to bring, him, bring home a pupper. What do we do? What do we need to know? And that is what this webinar is all about. We're going to be informing and guiding everyone. What are the first few things that you need to understand? Okay. So it's not just about, um, okay, you don't want to get caught. Uh, um, Parang unaware and un un educated. Okay. So, what we want is we want you to be fully informed because the dog behavior starts with um, getting the puppy first. Where do we get the puppy? Okay. And then, um, how do we select a puppy? All right. And then, of course, as soon as you bring home the puppy, what do you do next? Okay. There's a lot of things that you have to make a decision. And well, I'm not here to make the decision for you. However, what I'm going to do is I'm going to challenge what you probably know, or maybe you would agree to some of our points. Okay. So sum it all up. Number one, as you can see in the screen, okay, 
puppy parent education. That's very important. A lot of us, parang, ah, I'm going to get a puppy and I'm just going to wing it out. Um, bahala na si Batman. That's not how it works because bringing home a puppy can be very difficult, especially if you are a first-time dog parent. All right? Lesson number two, evaluating a puppy's progress. So, all right, so you're trying to find a breeder. That was now you've selected a breeder. Now we're going to go on evaluating how do we actually select a pupper. So those are the things that pag-uusapan natin. And lastly, and probably the most common question that we get here in our school and even in my profession, that is how training made easier. So three things. Stay tuned. If you have any questions, just comment. Uh, and Doc Ron will read it and maybe we can share ideas so we can help you out. Yeah, right, Doc. So I write, Coach, sorry. So sabi ko mga kanina, we are done, we're quite done no, with the discussions of the puppy diseases from the previous episodes. So aside from the infectious diseases, there are several things that we need to know to be prepared on getting one cute puppy, right? So with this, Coach, if I were to get a puppy, what should I be thinking about to prepare for my journey of becoming an official pet parent? Well, okay. So you have to think about, first of all, the finances. So we're not even in lesson one yet. However, you need to prepare yourself for the finances. You need to be able to get really good dog food, okay, to feed your puppy. You need to also prepare for potential... Uh, veterinary bills because again puppies need vaccination they need to be brought to the vet regularly you need to also make sure that um, well you can afford to buy the supplies that you would need maybe pee pads if you're interested in that um, toothbrush toys leash collar what else shampoo and all this other stuff that your dog would need so it's really more on Preparing financially and emotionally um, for family because, again, when you bring home a pupper, it's as if you have another human being living with you. Though necessarily, of course, we must warn um, dogs are not human and let's not treat them like little humans because usually that's where the problems start um, to happen if we try to make them act like a human, which they are not. They are puppies and we need to respect that. We need to teach them to behave like puppies. However, we need to teach them the etiquettes of living in the human world. Okay, So those are just a few things. But again, um, it all starts with preparing yourself, which brings us to lesson number one. Okay, Ang um, nangyayari kasi is, well, as soon as you bring home a puppy, okay, or even when you're just looking, the clock is running the time is ticking and if you miss any of the points okay or the de developmental deadlines that we generally talk about uh in this webinar okay what's gonna happen is you might have a problem maybe not the, the first month because usually all dogs are good dogs for the first two months however problems start to arise by the third fourth and then between five to six my dog is now biting hard. So am I prepared for that? Do I know what to do? Well, before you even get into that kind of problem, this is what that, that this webinar is all about. We want to inform you to be prepared, make the right decisions before you even take on a puppy. All right. So shall we proceed, Dr. Aniel? Yes, Coach. That's right. No, we Thank you for those uh, paunang insights with our a topic for today. So first stop with this lesson number one. What type of dog ang dapat ko bang hunin? Coach. Right. So um, the type of dog, maybe we can just generalize it into two categories. Okay. There's a lot of breeds out there, but in general, let's just categorize that into two. Okay. So the type of dog is maybe you can go for um, mixed breed or a pure bred. Okay. So, dalawa lang natin. Of course, there's uh, over 300 dog breeds in the world. However, most commonly here in the Philippines, diba, we have one pure bred, 
and then or the mixed breed okay including the aspens okay they're considered mixed breeds okay um of course we call them now aspens diba so um mixed bred or pure bred they are just the same generally on how you would want to take care of them but you need to really prepare yourself muna okay i'm making a decision i would like to be an informed pet parent okay um you you get to know yourself you ask yourself a question do i want a pure bred do i want um a mixed breed and what are the genetic issues that uh, comes along with it because well if you wanted a golden retriever okay you will get a golden retriever behavior chances are if you get it from a really good breeder all right now with, let's say you go with the pure bred you also have to understand that with pure bred yes they will look like what you see in the photos a nice beautiful golden dog that retrieves okay however they can also be mouthy you need to understand that they can be very mouthy they can um show behaviors that maybe you're not prepared okay for for mixed breeds now that's a 50-50 of depending what the parents are okay and i'm not really too much of a fan of designer dog breeds um because it's just really a harder for somebody even for a trainer to predict what the behavior is going to be okay pero whether you get a uh, let's say a mixed breed or even an aspen okay you always check the parents okay chances are kung ano yung in the filipino saying kung ano yung bunga kung ano yung puno yun ang bunga right so you always have to check the 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 lineage okay even if that's an aspen check out the mom matapang ba yung mom or hindi okay so the the most important thing is really deciding which breed and then okay when you then select a breed okay you have to be very careful because a lot of people out there are going to sell you stuff diyan napapasok yon mga marketing terms um dr niel uh, meron ba talagang teacup chihuahua or princess type shih tzu dr niel Actually, Coach, pag sinabi natin na may teacup na chihuahua, ibig sabihin nun, hindi na sila lalaki. Ano yun? Uh, we are like uh, thinking of a chihuahua that is smaller, uh, as, as small as a rat. So, mm-hmm. there no such thing as teacup. Okay, so if, if they're a toy or small, those are toy small breed. Pero there are no such thing as teacup chihuahua or teacup or whatever breed. Perfect, perfect. I love it. Thank you so much for that insight, uh, Doc Ron. So you heard it from the expert himself, from our um, vet, Doc Ron. There's no such thing as a princess or a teacup. Okay, actually, when you go to a clinic, they will not put it na parang teacup or uh, woolly or um, marketing term they would just put in the breed of the dog based on what it appears like if it looks like a shih tzu then it must be a shih tzu okay so purebred you need to make sure that when you choose a particular breed of dog you need to make sure you know what you're doing you have to do your 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 research okay and research now is super easy you have to just google check out the forums and don't just look at the good things about the dog because no dog is perfect and in my 10 years of experience even if the best dog like my dog serena she's a golden retriever we have done a lot of work just for her to be the good dog that she is but she's not perfect she is scared of thunder okay she's super scared okay now where did she get that she got that from the mom okay yeah mana mana All right, and there's only so much that you could do as a dog trainer to try to fix that because that is inbred. Okay, that's already in the dog's um, programming naturally, and it's so hard to compete with nature. All right, so it's really about nature versus nurture thing. But again, purebred, it, they will have their flaws and they're not perfect. No dog breed is perfect, so you have to just be fully aware. And then when it comes to mixed breeds, um, usually here's a quick trivia. Let's say you have a, bl- a Labrador. Usually they're color black. However, they do come in three colors. 
Okay? So, pero ang pinaka dominant color is the black. Right? Now, if you mix a black with a, a black Labrador with a standard poodle, you, you then get a what they call a Labradoodle. Okay? Now, if you look at a dog um, and it looks like more of a Labrador, chances are the behavior or the dominant behavior is going to be Labrador-like. Mm-hmm. If you mix it with a Sabian Husky, or maybe you're not really sure because you have a mixed bred dog, okay? You're not really sure it was given to you as a gift or or uh, maybe you, you're you just interested with this beautiful dog that you'd want to adopt. You just have to check. All right, this dog looks like a Dachshund more than a Shih Tzu. Chances are it's going to be behaving more like a Dachshund. So that's just a quick tip, okay? However, you just have to really make sure that you scrutinize. Okay, and uh, don't be duped with celebrity television or films. Na parang you see a dog, because when I we were making um, commercials, okay, and we even made a teleserie, all right, with my dog Serena, when the show was uh, still airing way back in 2018, there were actually a lot of dogs or a lot of pet parents who wanted to have a golden retriever because they just they can see Serena on screen doing this wonderful stuff. However, we trained those behaviors for the past three, four years, okay? even five years doing that. So it's not really uh, that simple. Okay, You have to spend a lot of time, right? Uh, way back in the 19, 1990s, I think that, uh, it was uh, 101 Dalmatian. Everybody wanted to have a Dalmatian. Way back in the 1980s, and uh, even up to the 1970s, there was this famous dog called Rin Tin Tin in the United States, and everybody wanted to have a German Shepherd. So, however, when they then get a German Shepherd, uh, they thought, oh, it's too strong for me. It's too uh, powerful. Um, it barks too much. So, there was also a time, I think, Beverly Hills Chihuahua, something like that. Everybody wanted to have a Chihuahua. Okay, I was trained chihuahuas. So again, you need to be very prepared for mixed breeds. You just have to really get to know that dog and then get as much information about the parent. So that's about your uh, preparing you, okay, to uh, decide, okay. Now, moving on, where to get a puppy. So we are now talking about... All right, I've decided. Let's say I want to have a golden retriever. I've really decided this is the breed that I wanted for so long, ever since I was a kid, or maybe my daughter wants it. That's another thing. Don't get a dog just because you want a dog as a gift for your daughter or for your son because of a high grade. Please, okay? Big mistake. You need to really think about it as a as a family. A dog is not a gift. It's a big Big, big responsibility. How long? That's probably depending on the lifespan of the dogs. But let's say for golden retrievers, they have a good 12 to 14 years. The bigger the dog breed, uh, the shorter the lifespan, like uh, St. Bernard's and Great Danes. Yes, they do grow up real quick, real big. But they have an average lifespan of around 7 to 9. So you have to make sure that you're prepared for that. And if you do give this dog... To a kid, are they prepared emotionally? Are able? Are they able to really learn about responsibility? Because it can be a big responsibility. And you, as a pet parent or a parent, okay, do you even have the time to care for this dog? Okay, because it will really eat your time, and it can get expensive real quick. Now, where to get the puppy? Usually, um, for the past couple of months, there has been a spike with uh, dog adoption. So at least some information in the United States that uh, I was able to uh, receive was some shelters are now out of dogs because most of them have been adopted out, which is good. Now, here in the Philippines, um, I-, I know you would hear na parang adopt, don't shop. I respect that. However, uh, personally, okay, this is just my own opinion. I would probably go with you can get your dog from a really good breeder. Because that's very important, okay? However, if you can adopt at least one Aspen, please do. 
Okay, I have seven, eight, nine dogs, pero I always have an Aspen, which I adopted from the shelter. So that's my personal advocacy, adopt at least one. I think that's going to be much more easier than trying to force you to um, adopt, don't shop. Because it's it's really up to you, okay? It's your decision, okay? I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm just making suggestions. All right. However, let's say you go on to um, getting the puppy, okay? Let's say you decided to just get a puppy from a shelter. Well, you have to coordinate with the shelter, get to know the dog, and then uh, talk with the resident trainer or even with... Um, uh, the kennel staff for that shelter. They would probably know how this dog is behaving, right? Now, let's say, in a man, you wanted to, uh, to get a purebred. Commonly, we get it from Facebook, and then we get it from uh, social media. Hindi ibig sabihin maraming likes, that makes them credible, okay? You need to ask them certain questions like, okay, what's your standard for breeding, okay? And then uh, you have to ask the breeder, Questions like, how do we maintain that? Does it fit my lifestyle? Okay. Is it hard? What are the genetic issues? Okay. What are the common problems of your lineage? Okay. So that's very important. You need to interview the breeder. And a good breeder will interview you at the same time. Okay. They will tell you, all right, so you want to have a golden retriever. Uh, Do you have space? Okay. Do you have space? What's your job? Will you be able to support the dog? Okay. Do you want, um, where do you live? Let's say you wanted an Alaskan Malamute, okay, which usually lives in uh, very cold uh, countries. Now, surprisingly, we actually have Alaskan Malamutes and Siberian Huskies here in the Philippines. Actually, if you check out the website of our kennels, okay, uh, our kennel registration here in the country, the Siberian Husky is actually on the top of uh, the most bred dog. Okay, that's another trivia. So it makes you wonder, okay, can the uh, Siberian Huskies and Alaskan Malamutes survive in our country? Yes, they can. They can adopt. However, air conditioning is highly suggested. Or maybe if you live in Baguio or you live in Tagaytay where it's a cooler climate, then maybe it would be better fit for you. All right? Or maybe you live in a condo. All right. So if you live in a condo, you have to check with your registration, with your association. I mean, Uh, do they allow big dogs and how many dogs is allowed? Do you have the facility or like maybe a kennel run or maybe a potty area for dog owners in your condo unit or maybe in your village? So those are things that you need to also consider when you're getting a puppy. All right. Tapos, um, one more point is you need to do uh, your own test. Prepare a set of tests that would you think would help you. Let's say, do you, I want to get a scared dog? Perhaps no. So, ako ang ginawa ko nun, I went up to, when I was getting my dog, Alaskan Malamute, and they were around four months when I visited the the kennel. What I did was create a big sound na magugulat lahat ng aso. And then I observed some of the dogs ran out, ran off. I said they were scared. So I said, like, okay, I don't like that. And then there were some dogs who went closer to me to inspect. So I said, like, okay, no, nope, I don't want that. What I did was pick a dog that was just standing there looking curious, but not scared. And that's when I picked my dog, Alaskan Malamute, named Stark. And the same thing with my golden retriever. I also asked the breeder, okay, give me the pinaka makulet dog that you have. Okay. And I will check them out. And then, well, you, we have Serena as a, as a small puppy who was already showing really great focus. I'd be like, oh, hey, you know what? This dog is just sitting because this dog is interested with me. So I'd be like, oh, she's a good candidate. And then uh, one thing that the breeder also noticed and was telling me about was, oh, yeah, umakit siya ng, ng fence. Um, tapos nakikipaglaro with the other dogs. I'd be like, huh, that's something really unique. So maybe that's the perfect dog for me. So I made the decision. All right. And then same thing. One more um, example with my Labrador. I wanted to have a really calm Labrador. And then from the litter, I saw Sophie sitting there okay, alone in a corner, uh, observing, pero not scared and also not too makulet. Okay. So I think I like that behavior. 
And that's when I got Sophie, which is, well, she's already 11 years old now. All right. So I think I made the right decisions in choosing my dog. So you can make those decisions as well. All right. Now, what's the best age to bring home a pupper? But uh, let's ask Doc Ron Muna. Doc, what are the usual uh, vaccines that they uh, need for, for dogs need um, vaccination? Let's talk about dog vaccination, Doc. Um, ano ba yung kailangan nilang vaccination, at least from the breeder muna, before they actually bring home a puppy? Or we're talking about the age now. Doc? Yes. All right, Coach. Uh, from the previous episodes na, na nagawa namin, we were able to discuss this. Eh. Um, aside from vaccination, it is really important na magkaroon ng proper deworming. So kailan ba nag-start yung deworming ng puppy? It starts as early as two weeks of age. So uh, ang pattern po ng deworming is at two weeks, four, fourth week, sixth week, and eighth week. Okay? Eight week of age ng aso. And then afterwards, it could be three months, every three months, depending on the diet na binibigay natin sa aso natin. For the vaccination naman, it starts at six weeks, five in one. Okay, yung 5-in-1 na yun, it's, a compo- it com- it's composed of uh, distemper, hepatitis, uh, parvovirus, and strains of leptospirosis. So, yun awesome. yung kailangan natin ibigay, Coach. Oh, I'm sure, Coach, di ba? Alam din natin yan because we have so many dogs and we need to complete those vaccinations before we, uh, before natin igala yung mga aso natin. Just Perfect. Yan, para lang maging ano para lang maging uh, aware tayo na of course pag di kompleto yung vaccination they can get uh, the disease from other dogs na makakasalamuhan nila outside good good now kasi the best age to bring home a puppy is actually 8 weeks or 2 months and usually the really good breeders already have the initial vaccinations pero you know what meron ako na pansin na isang scam Tayo lang naman nag-usap dito, Doc, di ba? Meron parang yeah. scam. Meron binibigay, puppies are being sold in the market, being adopted, being rehomed. Tapos, ang nangyayari ngayon, they would give the vaccination letters or vaccination card. Uh, ito, nakikita ko rin minsan eh, uh, with my students. And then I'm checking it out. Walang stamp or firma ng, ng vet. Ng right? vet. Walang license. So what what do you think of that before we just... Kasi it already gives you an idea of how the dog is being maintained, di ba, dog? Yes, coach, before you even right. take home the puppy. Yes, that's right. Actually, we've been encountering this... Uh, na ba ako tagal? Like, I'm already six years na vet. Uh-huh. And even nung time na in, nag-intern pa lang kami on several clinics, we've been encountering this problem na. Ang problema dito, coach, if your dog has been vaccinated with, uh, of course, non, non-vet or non-licensed vet, hindi natin masasabi that the proper handling of vaccine, of vaccine mm-hmm. has been observed kasi vaccines are stored in a cool, uh, cold storage. So, dapat mm-hmm. uh, malamig siya. So, if we were able, if hindi natin nasunod yun, chances are magkakaroon ng failure of vaccination. That's one, po, that's one point. Second point, is if mali yung age. Uh-huh. Right? Right. Uh, coach, so bakit natin binibigyan at start ng six weeks? Kasi merong windows of susceptibility na tinatawag. So kailangan uh, mapababa muna yung maternal antibody ng puppy before we start giving them the vaccination, which is usually started at the age of six weeks ng puppy. Alright? And aside from that, last point, meron pong mga aso that are uh, eliciting allergies yes. sa vaccine. Right? So, so uh, pag na-experience yun ng aso, if someone uh, vaccinated your dogs and then yung dog mo ay nagkaroon ng allergy, alam ba niya kung paano i-handle? Right? So, that's uh, those three important points yung uh, dapat nating tandaan why a uh, licensed vet can only administer the vaccine. Right, coach? Right. Right. Thank you for that insightful idea and information about vaccines. Because a lot of people think that, okay, um, mm-hmm. vaccinations is not important. But you know what? You would know a dog is being cared for. Again, we're talking about before we take home a puppy. Huh? We're still talking mm-hmm. about where we're getting and how do we get the dog. But a lot of people miss out 
Okay, ito, meron paper yan, meron vaccine yan, di ba? Pero if you check, wala. That's also one way of these breeders cost-cutting on their um, operations because they want to have maximum profit. Okay, So unfortunately, it has become a money game. It's just a profit game for some. I'm not saying everyone because I do know a few breeders na parang they maintain a really high standard of breeding and usually wala naman problem. Okay. Um, now, when you're already trying to cut down on your costs and letting go of the vaccinations, there are some breeders because they administer the vaccines themselves even though they are not yeah. trained and they're not professional. And usually, there's a problem. And I've had students na parang pagdating sa akin, sabi ko, I cannot take that student. Doc, alam mo bakit, Doc? Kasi meron na siyang uh, kennel cough. Oh, yes. all right. Umuubo, yes. and then you can see na meron siya parang uh, mm -hmm. sipon. Meron pang iba, yung pinakamalala, nerve damage. Ano bang disease, Doc, na pwedeng mangyari without the pet parents knowing na inuwi pala mm -hmm. nila? Anong disease to? Um, yung disease na sobrang bilis kumalat kahit na mad mad matabi lang yung dog mo. Magkakaroon. Mm -hmm. Pero nagsishake siya. Ano yun? Nako, yan ay ang canine distemper. Actually, oh, okay. yes, yeah, scary. Yeah. Uh, just talking about this is gives, giving me the chills. Nakakatakot do. Nakakawa in the part of the dog. Yes, yung canine distemper kasi it's a multi-systemic disease. Eh. We've discussed this uh, during the previous episode of Maxim Talks. It is uh, spread through direct contact from mm -hmm. uh, from one dog to another. And may nakakasurvive naman, of course, pero ang nakakaawa dito, it has forever damage on the part right. of the dog. That's why mm -hmm. nagkakaroon ng twitching, ganyan. Those are ner nerve damages. Kaya nga sabi ko last time, kung di sila naniniwala sa forever, coach, maniwala na sila kasi may forever damage on the stepper with their dog. Right, right. And that's why we're doing this kind of webinars. Yes. Usually we do webinars or seminars on a live audience. I know there's more interaction there. Pero the reason that Pilmico Maxim is now doing this kind of webinar because we're trying to keep safe we're trying to keep your dog safe as well okay and as most especially our pet parents safe that's why we're doing this kind of webinar because we're also scared of forever damage of covid19 <laughs> yeah. so it's not just that's the right. dogs now that needs to be scared but we need to be scared for ourselves as well all right so going back best age is eight weeks because we're concerned about the vaccination pero doc hindi lang na vaccination ang concern Yes. Meron ako, yesterday lang ako. Yesterday, okay? Takita tayo lang na mag-uusap. Kita wala naman nanonood no, na, na sa piso. <laughs> <laughs> Kahapon, I was consulting a, a dog. A uh, dog was a French bulldog. Tapos sabi nila, right. this dog has bitten the eye already. The dog is 8 months. Tapos, mm -hmm. ang nangyari din is, this dog has a strong resource guardive behavior. And they were asking me, bakit nang kaganito? And I was telling them, well, it could be from the from the parent. Pero, something alarming. Okay, magugulat ka dito, Doc. Kasi sabi ko, are you sure? Please verify this information. Ano yun? Sabi niya, um, apparently, tung breeder na pinagkunan nila, which is a friend, okay, had this male dog na stud, tapos ginamit niyang stud doon sa isang female. Tapos, okay. yung female, when it gave birth, two days pa lang daw, kinuha na yung puppy share. Oh my God. Tapos, saka na lang inalagaan. <laughs> okay. So, maybe bottle fed. So, Scary yun, Doc. I'm um, talking about doon sa practice ng ganun na parang taking the puppy away. What happens to the puppy health dahil wala siyang milk from the mom? Alright. Uh, actually, yun yung sinasabi natin, no? Nakukuha nila yung maternal antibodies doon by just by drinking the milk from their mother. So if you're taking away the puppy earlier than 8 weeks, you're depriving them the nutrition that they need. Right? Mm -hmm. Hindi pa naman natin binibigyan ng solid food ng, uh, at, at, that, at that age. So, where do they get their nutrients? Right? It's from the mother's milk. So, hindi naman sa hindi na bibigyan ng uh, foster milk yung nutrients, di ba? Pero iba pa din yung nando doon na nanggagaling. Ang complete nutrition from the mother's milk. Right, coach? Right, right. So, mm -hmm. breast milk is still best for puppies. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Alright, so true. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> <have> true. <laughs> okay. 
Pero ang concern naman dito on the training side, psychology, psychological yeah. side for the dog is the dog never learns bite inhibition and uh, socialization from the litter. So ang mangyayari niyan, they will be a little bit more mouthier, they would be a little bit more scared or two things eh, extreme because they don't have that interaction with the litter mate and with the mom. Pwedeng super scared sila na dog or pwede rin naman super aggressive or super yabang or siga. Mm-hmm. Okay? Because they need that kind of interaction with their litter mates. Okay? So that's the um, issue if you take the dog way too early. Okay? It can be with the health. Pero ang mas nakakatakot ka because uh, again, with this technology and foster milk and with the help of your vet, they can keep your dog healthy. Pero the psychological damage that's happening or maybe dogs not really learn the essential social skills, doon tayo nang magkakaroon ng problema and it can be long-lasting. Ito yun, magiging forever din, dog. No? Kung ano yeah. yung experience nila nung puppy. Okay, nagiging forever din yan. And then of course, really good breeders would tell you. Mag-ingat tayo kasi maraming mga mga breeders, ang tinatawag na backyard breeder, okay, Yes, I'm not saying that they don't love their dog. They love their dog so much. That's why they bred and they want to spread that happiness. Pero without proper training and knowledge about which dogs to breed or what not. Kasi nga, backyard eh. Diba? Mm-hmm. They just decided to be breeders overnight. Um, nagkakaroon ng problem because they're not uh, planned. Okay? So, meron naman yung mga puppy millers. Ito usually makikita nyo sa mga, uh, well, ilang mga pet stores. Okay? Um, meron konting scam technique dyan. well not scam pero meron technique dyan eh they will not let you hold the puppy pero pag when you're looking already papahawak na sa yung puppy pag hinawakan mo na yun it's sold okay because yeah. you, your brain then releases uh, endorphin serotonin and uh, oxytocin the happy hormones, Par- oh, yeah, happy hormones. Parang, ah, so happy oh, super cute okay I'm gonna take you home pero please Uh, again, these are things that you need to be careful kasi baka maging impulsive ang pag-uwi nyo ng puppy and uh, impulse purchase or adoption of a puppy is really not a good thing. It doesn't work out too much. Uh, you agree, Doc? Yes, I agree, Coach. Kasi hindi ka prepared eh. Yung parang bigla ang Actually, yung parang pag nag-shopping ka lang din, hindi ka prepared sa bigla ang pagbili mo. That's the same with uh-huh. bigla ang pagbili ng puppy. Hindi. Kanina, diniscuss natin yung mga considerations. ba? Diba? Maybe you're not prepared na magsasuffer not just the puppy, but of course, ikaw din. Correct. All right. Well, maybe enough of that. Let's move on to lesson two. Let's see what is lesson two. All right, coach. So before that, no, before lesson number two, uh, I would like to, you know, uh, now that we have already chosen a puppy to bring home soon, of course, uh, it's really important to consider what kind of dog food that we're gonna feed them, right? So no need to worry because, of course, Maximilit Puppy has high levels of probiotics, DHA, and omega-3 and 6, which improve nutrient absorption in the gut for probiotics, and it gives uh, brain development for all our growing puppies with the help of DHA, right? So, and of course, it promotes healthier skin and coat for your puppers so that they can give us that perfect cuddle. All right, so coach, what's in store for us with our lesson number two? All right, so ito, mas madali na lang to. Lesson number two, and then later, before you know it, we're already on lesson number three. Lesson number two, evaluating puppers' progress, okay? So this is, um, di ba lesson one, parang we're talking about where do we get the pupper? Now we're going to be talking about how do we actually make it, or how do we actually choose Okay, let's see. You've decided to get a, again, an example kanina, just to carry over, a golden retriever. Because golden retrievers usually are perfect for first-time pet parents or maybe a shih tzu, okay? Uh, or maybe a beagle. Ito yung mga ibang uh, beginner dogs, okay? So um, now you found the breeder and then you're now going to make a decision. Okay, so paano ko ba pipiliin, okay? So, well... By the time you bring home a new puppy, okay, say around eight weeks, which is again recommended, the dog should be accustomed in an, an indoor domestic environment. Usually, a really good breeder would already have trained your dog with potty training and has already socialized okay, your, your pup 
your pupper. Okay, so the best way really is to make sure that you know kung ano in specific behavior and work with your breeder ano ba yung kailangan nila. Okay, um, here's a few things na kailangan natin matandaan. Okay, so let's just uh, move the slide a little bit uh, so I can show you. Okay, okay, so selecting a good puppy Unang una, how obedient are they? Mapapansin nyo niyan. Do they really give focus? Are they food motivated? Okay. What else? Do they love playing toys? Do they love to play fetch? Usually, as a puppy, you would already see these behaviors. If you see a puppy na parang medyo scared, I would not recommend that. Maybe this dog is too scared. Eventually, you would have to uh, enroll uh, your dog um, not to teach new behaviors, pero just trying to correct that. So, I would not recommend that. Okay, so choosing a puppy is as vital as choosing the breeder. So again, lesson one, you chose the breeder. Lesson two, now you're here. Okay, so ano ba yung mga kailangan natin i-test? Okay, so let's move on to the next slide, please. Okay, puppy handling. Okay, how well does the dog behave when you pick them up? Okay, okay. or when you carry them? Okay. Uh, or maybe you can give them a slight hug. How do they behave? Though dogs generally don't like being hugged, okay? So, puppy handling. Because they would naturally nip, but again, the breeder should have already done a little bit of work. Dapat nasanay niya na doon sa different handling exercises, maybe like checking the teeth, okay? Open the dog's mouth, checking the teeth, pull, um, tugging the tail a little bit, checking the ears. Those are things na kailangan masanay na yung puppy. So, if you think about it, if you don't do a good job with lesson one, medyo sublime na sa lesson one, may hirapan kayo dito sa lesson two. Kasi you won't be able to check. All right? Remember kanina, I mentioned about my Stark, my Alaskan Malamute named Stark. So that is that then talks about, well, sound sensitivity. Okay? Let's talk about sound sensitivity. Meron kasi mga aso na super scared talaga just by doing a clap. Okay? Natatakot na Okay? Let's just uh, talk about that real quick. Usually, itong mga, ano, mga nangyayari na ito, um, mana mana to. Okay? There are all, and it also depends on the dog breed as well. Pero chances are, kung excessive naman yung fear nila, and you don't test this out, when you're selecting the puppy, you're going to be in trouble. Baka masyado siyang uh, uh, excessive barfer. Unless nalang you actually wanted to have this dog who is extremely sound sensitive because you wanted to have a guard dog, let's say a German Shepherd or maybe a Rottweiler. These are awesome, beautiful, very smart dog breeds. I personally love them. Okay. Pero, how sensitive do you want? Pero, you don't want a dog that is overly sensitive then. Again, magkakaroon ka din ng problem dyan. A general rule of thumb is, when you're choosing a dog, you always want the 50-50. Okay, 50% of this, 50% of this, not too shy, not too yabang, okay? Because it can go either ways. Pang masyado on one end, um, you have to solve that, okay? So training your dog is very important, which we'll be talking about in future episodes. But we're just talking about the baseline. Usually nature versus nurture, all right? Nature muna talaga tayo. We focus on the nature of the dog, what is natural for them, and then taking that dog na sa palagay nyo, magiging okay. If you're not really sure, get in touch with a professional. Maybe a friend who has uh, experience with that same breed. Or maybe get another dog professional. Or maybe talk to your vet. They can make an assessment before you actually make that purchase. All right? And lastly, uh, household etiquette. Usually, dogs. Oh wait. Um, so let's just have a quick reminder, Buna. You are choosing a pup to come and live in your home and adopt your lifestyle. So please make sure the puppy has been prepared for domestic life in general and is suitable for your lifestyle in particular. Okay. So just a quick reminder. Okay. So moving on. So uh, let's talk about uh, household etiquette. Okay, is the dog potty trained already? Para mas madali. 
the problem with getting dogs in as a pet store then, okay, because they are kept in these small crates around maybe two feet by three feet, usually ganong mga sizes, they never really get to roam around the house. They never get to play and have that early socialization needed for a stable dog growing up. So um, usually ganun nangyayari. You then have a dog that is super hard to potty train. And potty training, which we'll be talking about uh, lesson three, okay, is one of the e easiest, um, theoretically, but it's one of the most demanding or time-consuming, okay, to do potty training. So, um, dapat meron ng etiquette. And again, getting it from a really good breeder uh, who knows what they're doing, you can probably ask them, okay, how is this dog when it comes to potty training? How is this dog when it, when it comes to greeting people? So, mapapansin nyo na kagad. So, I'm just giving you ideas kung ano ba dapat yung mga kailangan yung um, maisipan. All right? Oh, by the way, just in case you have any questions, please comment below later in the program or the webinar. We're going to be trying our best to answer your questions. All right? And, pero lastly, when you're choosing a dog, is personal preference. Now, everything that I've said, even your most suggestions need Dr. Ron, um, are just suggestions. By the end of the day, it's going to be your personal preference. Maybe because this particular dog that you wanted is a friend, is coming from a friend who, who just had a litter. Okay, so it's up to you. Now, let's say you decide to go to a shelter and then get a puppy there. It's really up to you. However, you just have to prepare yourself and try to educate yourself as much as possible so you don't want to just get a puppy and then saka ka na mag -aaral. It's best that you really read books, do a lot of um, uh, reading, tapos you can watch YouTube videos, okay? Follow Maxim Talks because, uh, well, the program is really cool because you can learn a lot, okay, in preparation and on future episodes as well. But we'd be able to talk and help you more. But again, it's really going to be up to you. Don't believe everything I say. You have to verify, all right? And then uh, try your best to talk with your family before you make that decision. All right. Doc, uh, we are... Going for lesson three. Is there anything else you'd want to add? Yes, all right. Before anything else, Coach, sobrang jam pack ng lesson one and lesson two natin, right? So before that, uh, let's just have a quick reminder lang, no? Kasi andyan eh, malapit na natin iuwi yung puppy natin. So what a better way to welcome your new family member is to give him the best dog food in town, all right? So treat them like the top dogs they are with Maxine. It is made special to help them poppers to grow into happy, active, tough, and smart doggos. So healthy puppies are happy, healthy puppies are active, and healthy puppies are smart. All right, so coach, down to our last lesson for today. What do you have for us with our lesson number three? Lesson number three, okay. Um, Errol is house training. Okay, so what we want is actually, let's say you already brought a home a puppy. You found a good breeder. You found this dog that you wanted, na, uh, stable or maybe um, super living. That's the kind of dog that you wanted. Okay, so you must have ni ni dog na kailangan. Of course, you need to make sure that you you're prepared for the dog's nutrition. So do that. But uh, a few things that you also have to understand, okay, is ano ba yung mga kailangan? Maybe you will need a crate, okay? Maybe you would also need a nice collar, a nice leash, okay? Pero hindi naman kailangan yung mga super expensive, okay? Um, just get the best leash that you think uh, fits your budget, okay? Pero um, keep it simple muna because your dog is going to be growing up real quickly, especially if you have a a big dog or a large breed dog like a Labrador or a German Shepherd or Rottweiler. Ano pa ba yung mga ibang malaki? Alaskan Malamutes. Okay? So, lalakit-lalakit. So, keep it cheap muna. 
Okay, so that's a really nice uh, tip right there because I know, I know dogs grow up so fast. I mean, that. All right. So house training. You need to make sure that your house is puppy proof. Okay. And whenever I visit homes, ito yung napapansin ko, um, meron mga chew marks on furniture. If you just had your dog, I mean your home, newly renovated, chances are you would need to redo your renovation again because your puppy will definitely try to rearrange your home. And some of the mildiest dog breeds out there are Golden Retrievers, Labradors, German Shepherd. Meron nga eh, my dog, si Serena, when she was a puppy, ang nangyayari ba doon? Um, she would just rest her head doon sa, sa isang stool. Okay? Not moving. Pero her mouth is, is moving. Diba? It, it was funny because, well, we found it funny. Pero uh, not too funny pag your dog is now destroying your home. And that's a normal sign. That's why you need to prepare yourself. You need to puppy-proof your, your home. I know of people who removed their um their throw pillows on a long sofa why because they expect that this puppy is going to play with those uh, throw pillows so um until the dog has been fully trained hindi nila binalik yun. they also tried to remove the shoes from uh, the doorway they lift it up and then put it into a cabinet somewhere bakit kasi definitely yan yung magiging paborito ng mga puppy nyo. okay and you have to take it from me then. Uh, my mistake when Sophie was growing up, um, ko siya sa tabi ng bookshelf. And then what happened was, well, Sophie decided to read. Uh, the problem is puppies don't read. So she decided to just play with the medical books of my siblings. And I ended up having to pay them. And it's not cheap, right? So sabi ko, oh, sana I could have just gotten a nice, good crate Okay, or maybe a bed that my dog won't be able to chew and then keep my dog secure when I'm not there. Diba? Again, so we're just talking about crates now. Pero mamaya, kasama natin yan sa tips natin. So, before your young pup can be trusted to have full run of the house, somebody must teach the house rule. And who's going to teach that? You. Is it going to be me? Well, I can do that, but it's not my dog. Your dog is going to be living with you. As soon as you get the dog home, I would encourage you that you get a crate and then let your dog sleep with you inside your room. Because they're scared. You just pick them off from uh, the breeder, um, a new place, a new environment. This dog is just super scared. So you need to bond with your dog. So dapat masanay na sila dun sa scent nyo. Okay. So let your dog sleep in your room. If you're not comfortable putting your dog on a bed, again, they're not potty trained yet. So get a crate small enough that they can move, but not too big that um, uh, they can just uh, run around and go in circles. Right? Importante kasi dogs love crates na sakto lang yung size. It should just fit your dog size. You don't want to put a chihuahua in a crate that fits a adult uh, golden retriever, right? So that's going to be too huge. Dogs want it to be in a den-like environment na it's it's cozy. Yan mga gusto nila because they got it from their common ancestor with the wolves. Okay, they they are both den dwelling animals. So you have to puppy proof your home. Okay, now let's try to make house training a little bit easier. Okay, when you come home, I think kailangan nyo, you need a comfortable bed, a water bowl with fresh water, and then. Chew toys. And specifically, sinabi natin, six hollow chew toys. We don't want to give them the squeaky ones. Okay? Kasi especially yung mga small animals, yung mga toys that looks like small animals, and then they squeak. Okay? Cold plush toys. Okay? The problem with that is a lot of people get it all wrong. Pinapasira nila, uh, no, binibigyan nila yung dun sa dog, and then they let the dog destroy that stuff which is not uh, recommended because once they start chewing that, um, it's as if you're giving a small animal to your dog to rip it to shred. So not recommended. Mas maganda yung mga hollow toys that you can, food, uh, you can put food inside and they can lick it. All right? And then uh, a doggy toilet, which is recommended na parang farthest away from the bed 
or just again bring your dog outside later pag-usapan din natin yan more on that so confinement you can create a lot of babies or a lot of people are not comfortable using crates kasi eh hey, coach i don't want my dog to be inside a crate well the thing about crates is i'm just going to give you an analogy babies human babies okay why do we put them in cribs if you're willing to put a human baby in a crib because you're busy and you're unable to supervise your baby which is again you won't be able to super to supervise them 24/7 natutulog sila so you put them in in a crib para they're safe they don't roll over and nothing can get to your baby and then ruin their sleep so same thing with dogs crate training isn't a must and uh, it's also important in teaching your dog to be comfortable and not get too anxious so gagawin nyo you get a crate and then make it comfortable you put your um, put their favorite toy or maybe their bed inside the crate make it very comfortable you can probably even hide uh, treats in their crate para they get to sniff around it makes a positive association with the dog okay now the purpose of long term confinement why do we want that one to confine the puppy to an area where chewing and toilet behavior is acceptable kasi if you put the dog inside a crate they won't be able to pee anywhere they won't be able to pee on your persian rug okay why kasi if you just let the dog free roaming around the house, mind you, two months, three, four, five, these are puppies. They don't know. So you will be using the crate when you are unable to supervise them. So you can then take them out and bring them to their designated potty area. To maximize the likelihood that the puppy will learn to use the provided toilet, we use this. Okay. We also want them to chew on appropriate toys, which you can place inside their crates hindi yung parang okay i'm looking for a toy i'm looking for a toy oh you know what i don't have a toy i'll just chew on the sofa or maybe on the uh corners of the bed okay or maybe your if you have wooden floors or wooden stairs i'll chew on that instead because your dog would be teething okay so that's the the purpose of long 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 of All right. Uh, Coach, I think you're on mute right now. Yeah, hello? Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay, that's okay. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, so auto mute Um what was the last thing that you heard, Doc? Uh you stop uh don't know, you started the house training as easy as one, two, three. Right. So you know, house training is as easy as one, two, three, one, you get a crate. If you cannot supervise a dog, you use a crate. Okay. Number two, you make that comfortable. Tapos, yung pinaka importante talaga is you bring your dog out for their potty trip every hour. I know this is hard and I do this. Means an puyat ako because um, you have to develop that association. Pero, again, kung, if you've been listening from the start of the program, uh, from puppies pa lang, dapat nagawa na ito ng mga breeder. Eh. Pero again, kung binili nyo sa pet shop and the, the dog is still there, naka-crate lang siya. Oo, oh, sanay siya sa crate, pero sanay siya mag-upo. And it's gonna be a little bit harder to train out. That's why we want the dog to be taken out every hour if you cannot supervise them. Okay? And then, uh, supervision is key. Okay? Don't just give them free run of the house because... The smartest dog in the world has an IQ of a two-year-old, and you have a puppy. So let's say your puppy would have an IQ of a six-month human or probably a one-year-old. Right? Question is, will you let a one-year-old run around the house unsupervised? Mm, maybe not. 
di ba? And I ask this question most of the time. Sabi nila, hindi, hindi ko papabayaan. Bakit? Yeah, kasi baka mapaano yung bata. So the same thing with puppies, okay? Let's not give them their full privilege just because they are not yet fully trained. So those are the three lessons that I think we can talk about and that you can take home before you take home your puppy. I hope you learned something. Doc, uh, I think we are ready to answer some of the questions that uh, was sent to us. Doc Ron? Yes. Because for that, Coach, I'll super thank you. Medyo, pati ako, I, I'm learning while I'm uh, interacting with you, Coach. Thank you so much. Especially right now, kapapanganak lang ng isa naming aso. So, Woo! I'm gonna... Yes, I'm going to use those techniques that you have mentioned in this <laughs> All right. Thank you so cool. much, Coach. Yes, this webinar wouldn't be complete without our Q&A segment, okay? Let's uh, read some from the chat, okay? Let's see it. Okay, first question from The Answer Labang, okay? Coach, what breed of dog do you recommend for beginners? Wonderful. Um, I think I mentioned a few dog breeds. If I, I, I know, without being too biased, mas maganda yung major stable na dog. Um, Golden Retriever, Labrador, um, German Shepherd, major okay sila. If you like big dogs, uh, again, getting it from a really good breeder. Um, pugs. I for the past decade, dog, uh, amazingly, wala akong kahirap hirap sa pugs. Makulit sila, yes. Pero they're amazing. Walang aggression sa pug. So go ahead. Um, I would not recommend French Bulldogs for first time kasi medyo stubborn ang mga bully breeds. Okay? So kailangan mataas na yung experience points mo doon. Level up ka na talaga kung ganun. I don't recommend big dogs na parang St. Bernard or Alaskan Malamutes or Siberian Huskies. Medyo marami nga talaga ngayon. I don't recommend that kasi masyado sila makulit for most pet parents. Um, ano pa ba yung mga ibang yung mga small breeds pwede yan mga poodle uh, shih tzus so pero again despite me naming some of these uh, beginner dog breeds getting it from a really 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 good breeder is a must yun yun you can get a ano yan Serbian Husky kung maganda naman yung lineage at saka generally calm yung lineage ng Husky that's fine or maybe German Shepherd Belgian Malinois mm, wag kayong kumuha nun Okay, because generally, uh, they need to be working dogs. <laughs> yes, so, yun mga, sana nasagot ko yung tanong niya. <laughs> yeah, so just add to add, no? Parang dapat, uh, you will reflect then on the lifestyle coach, right? Correct. To, to correct, watch correct. your breed of dogs. Uh -oh. right, thank you. <laughs> yes, okay. Uh, next question. All right. This question is from uh, Mr. James Manhaven. Okay, my dog is always scared of water. Uh, it's difficult to deal with him every bath time. So how do I deal with him, coach? Oh, why is your dog scared of water? Okay, maybe negative association nila. So uh, there are some dogs that are, that love water, like golden retrievers. Again, mga retriever breeds, poodles, they love water because they're water dogs as well. Um, if your dog is scared, maybe you can use a gentler way of um, bathing your dog. Um, wag nyo ilulublog ka agad dun sa tubig or you use a, a low pressure uh, water when you're doing that. And then maybe the time of the day that you're giving the dog a bath, uh, don't do it parang uh, with the cold water. Mas maganda siguro um, maybe middle of the day when it's a little bit hot and humid and they feel relaxed whenever they get wet. So that's very normal. Pero another thing that ginagawa din namin is Especially if your dog is food motivated, we actually give them a treat. So habang ako nagpapaligo, or at least one of my staff is giving a bath, binibigyan namin sila ng favorite dog treat, and you can see the, the dog chewing habang binabasa yung katawan niya. Just to make a, neg uh, a positive association. And um, pag na-prepare sa kasi yung aso na maligo, uh, ano yan, nagkakaroon ng negative association. And I've seen dogs na parang they resort to biting and then going crazy. Uh, whenever it's bath time, it's really about making a positive association and then starting young. Okay, mahirap nang sa mga lang itetrain yun aso. Okay, pag meron na siyang takot dun sa ligo time, um, starting young is the best time to really get the dog used to those little stresses. Yes, that's right. Because ang ang 
pagpapaligo is actually considered stress sa aso yes. natin. So, you might as well schedule a regular day of ligo para sa aso natin. So, that hindi rin sila magbibigla. And of course, I would like to emphasize yung sinabi ni coach na bigyan ng treats. Kasi that is one technique na ginagawa sa vet clinic. I've learned this mm-hmm. from a good friend, si Doc Ina Corpus, if you're watching. Hi. Uh, he, she always give treats whenever he, mm-hmm. whenever she gave treatment, especially to cats and dogs, na medyo makulit. And nadadivert yung attention ng dogs. And nare-relax sila. So, yes. that's a hack. Yeah, life hack. <laughs> life hack. Uh, yeah, with you guys. <laughs> okay. Right. So, uh, moving on to our next question, please. All right. This one, Coach, is from Avik Alpice. So, Coach, they are, he, she's asking for any tips for adapting middle age or dog, or old dogs. Okay. How can we make it easier for them to adjust in a new home? Ah, that's a tougher question. Okay. <laughs> Pero, sige. Kasi because it's a middle age or an older dog, it's best that we make the ano, make an assessment muna. Uh, is our family or our home suitable for this old dog? Kasi older dogs have a different need than puppies. They need uh, quiet. They don't want to be stressed too much. Um, it's really about giving as le- less stress as much as possible especially if it's a senior dog kasi parang lolo na to eh parang mga lola na um dog um mga old dogs we define old dogs mga 6 years am i correct yes yes senior dogs are, of course depending pa rin kasi pag smaller breed medyo oh. uh, iba yung pamantayan natin pero considerably those ages are senior dogs na coach like 6 years starting from 6 years they're considered as senior dogs already. Right. So, ganun, you have to really find a good uh, balance of uh, uh, the proper introduction. Maybe you have a, an existing pack, okay, at home. So, kailangan i-check nyo muna how are they with meeting new dogs? Diba? Are they friendly enough? Tapos, when you're um, getting a new dog, kailangan unti-unti. It, they don't click in just one day or one week. Sometimes it takes a few months in order for this new dog to blend into your new family and adapt to the lifestyle that you probably have. Yes, that's right. Working with a trainer will probably help. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, that's right. That's actually one good suggestion, Coach. <laughs> Contact a trainer. And of course, I read one, I know I read one paper that older dogs uh, became more matampuhin. They, they have the attitude problem na. So you might as well check on that too kasi mahirap ituwid na yung behavior ng isang old dog. So yes. medyo yeah. it's kind of a challenging, right coach? It is. It is a challenge. Yes. All right, uh next question, I think. Can I have two more? This All right. question is from Miss Jenny's Ann. okay? So coach, how to control the aggressive behavior of a dog? Oh, aggression. Maybe we can talk about this in future um, webinars. But uh, aggression kasi is not about taking control, okay? So we don't want you to force whatever you want onto the dog. It's really, first of all, kailangan yung muna ng management, okay? But if you've been listening to the webinar since we started, aggression nanggagaling din yan doon sa lineage, okay? So, and then if you mess up with the uh, developmental needs of your dog, na parang you don't socialize them, then eventually it can become fearful, and then eventually angry, then eventually aggressive. Pero um, I do not brand a dog particularly aggressive right away. Um, at least for force free training, we call them reactive, meaning they're just scared of a particular trigger or a particular event. But they're not over. They're not really aggressive. Because when you say aggressive, on definition, natin gen is kunare human aggressive. Okay. Pagkakita niya palang, no matter who that human is, susubud na siya. Then that dog is aggressive. Okay. Pero let's say uh, ayaw niya lang ng mga nakasumbrero. So meaning, um, kailangan ma meet your trigger na nakasumbrero ka kaya nakahudi ka para magpakita siya ng bad behavior. Meaning your dog is just being reactive. It can be solved, all right? Pero um, 
rather than trying to control an aggressive dog or a reactive dog, mas maganda you minimize the stress level and you manage the dog's environment. And the best way to really solve those issues is um, try to introduce those stress as little as possible so you can have the opportunity to, to make a positive association. You do not force that. You try to develop a positive association and let the dog choose. Do I want to behave this way? Meron consequence yan. So working with a professional dog trainer who specializes in force free training or positive way of training dog would be the best way to approach your issue. Thank you so much for the question, Jenis. All right. So Miss Jenis, I know you might want to check this out with Coach Francis later on. So you know. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, let's see what we can do. <laughs> yeah. We're down to our last one question. Okay. This is from Asniff Tree uh, Trickle. Okay. How do I discipline my dog without hurting her? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um in, in general using force free training. Um let me just define Muna. Uh, let me just expand on the term force free training. Force free needs to be hidden. We prefer not to use excessive force. Okay. In training dogs. Okay. However, it doesn't mean na wala siyang, walang punishment. Meron pa din punishment eh. Let's say you want a treat and you're jumping up on me. Okay. Let's say you come home and then usually common issue to dogs are so happy to see you. They will jump up on you, up and down, up and down. Diba? Um, without you knowing, baka na reward nyo. You bend down and then you say, hey, good dog. I miss you too. By doing that, while the dog's jumping up and down, up and down, up and down, you're now rewarding that behavior. Diba? Meron mga ibang tips, diba? Sabi, paluin mo. Okay, fine, that would work. Pero meron pa bang ibang way of training that dog? Maybe wag mo siyang pansinin. That's already punishment. Hindi mo siya pinapansin. The dog will then, ah, okay, hindi mo pinapansin. Pag napansin mo na the dog is now much more relaxed, you say, good dog, you're gonna give a treat or just praise. Okay, so in general, I have, uh, what, 29 dogs uh, in my facility right now. Not one of those dogs will try to ever jump up on me. You know why? Bakit? Kasi pagpasok pa lang, I ignore them. And then I call them when I want to and then give them a reward when they do approach. So it's really about teaching yourself first before you teach the dog. Not the other way around, okay? Guys, pet parents, um, please, teach yourself muna before you teach the dog. Kasi mahirap yung parang, um, you know what, this dog, I'm going to bring you to a trainer or uh, ask my vet about this behavior, pero you're not checking up. What are you doing wrong? So um, disciplining your dog without hurting your dog is really a lifestyle, okay? So you need to make a decision what kind of techniques you want to use. And um, I'm not saying na parang when you use... Uh, Chokers, it's all wrong. Maybe it, it will work for you, but for most, it will not work. So you have to train yourself muna. Good on. All right. Thanks, Coach. No, marami, marami akong natutunan. And of course, marami rin natutunan yung mga viewers natin on all those questions that we have read. And we still encourage everyone to send in your questions in the comment section below. And babalikan ko pula, and I will try to answer them all the soonest possible that I can, all right? So just ask away anything that you want to ask. All right, thank you, dear pet parents, for being with us again today. And really do hope we were able to prepare you on your journey of being a certified foreign, all right? So of course, with the help and guidance only from a certified foreign and trainer, Dog Coach Francis. Coach, sobrang thank you for sharing your expertise. So any parting words for or message to all of our viewers? Well, thank you so much for inviting me over. It's been uh, wonderful. I had fun and this is what we do. We try to educate parents. And thank you so much for Maxine uh, for inviting me over. And uh, makikita pa tayo ulit so, sa future uh, webinars. So please do follow us because we want to help you uh, manage your dog's behavior and then help you give the best care for your pets. Don't forget to follow me on our social media pages um, on Instagram and on our Facebook account. Just search Dog Coach Francis. If you have any dog training questions 
or you'd like you're interested in one of our programs, you can just message us on our social media pages. So again, thank you so much, pet parents. Keep healthy, keep safe, and don't forget to pet your dog. All right. Thank you so much, Coach. And once again, thank you for tuning in. And please watch out for the next episodes of Maxim Talks. This has been your host, Dr. Raniel Montero, reminding all pet parents out there to always do good for your doggos. All right? So bye-bye.